Okay, so what is Homer's first step? How do we, how do we phrase that? What words do we use? Factors, yeah, I love that phrasing. The word factor is very specific. It has a, a very exact meaning. Uh, if we factor out a C, that word factor implies that C will be multiplied by something. Factors are. So factor out C. That means that each of these is C times something. C times 18, uh, C times 9 times C, C times C squared. They all have a factor of C, meaning that C can be multiplied by something to get each of those. Uh, the second step, what polynomial does, or what kind of polynomial does Homer factor here? call that if, it, if the highest power is a 2? Second degree. Second degree, it's a degree 2, is a quadratic. These are all equivalent statements. Alright, simple one. That's the number one thing that you want to do is factor out a common factor if there is one among all the terms. Remember that. So Roy Lee made some, uh, some kind of a mistake here. Why does Roy Lee circle the two groups for Roy Lee that he's going to use factor by grouping. What's that? End of the third. Let's say that necessarily means four numbers. You've got four terms, right? You got uh, here's a term, and there's plus another term, minus a, plus a, a negative term, plus another negative term. So we have four terms. Uh, factor by grouping. Really, theoretically, even though this will be four terms, will be like our maths for factor by grouping. Theoretically, any number of terms that is not prime, so four or uh, six, nine, eight, if you can break them up into equal groups, meaning that each group has an equal number of terms, you could conceivably use this same approach uh, on that and factor by grouping there. And, and so far, 4 is the only one that, that could work like that. We have two terms, but that's difference of squares, difference of cubes, some cubes. We got three terms, that'll be quadratic or quadratic form. Four terms, that's, the, that's the, the smallest number that's not prime. One is prime, well, one is technically not prime, but it's not divisible by anything else. Two is prime, three is prime, four is the first non prime number. If we went to six terms, get back by grouping with six terms. Two groups of three, three groups of two. But again, four terms, it's going to be our max on factor by grouping. Um, so factor by grouping, correct approach. Um, let's see, in the, in the first group here, uh, what does he factor out? N squared, N squared times five, N squared times N. Okay, so we get N plus five here. Uh, factors out what from these? Minus. A minus 9, a negative 9. Uh, so it gets uh, and a positive n plus 5, n plus 5. n squared minus 9, n plus 5. That looks like you did it right, so why is it not complete?
This one right here, n squared minus 9 is a difference of squares. So that's what we can say. n squared minus 9 is a difference of squares. So n plus 5, that's already factored. But this can be factored as n plus, n plus 3 times n minus 3. <coughs> Finally, Quinton does not find the solutions to this polynomial correctly. The polynomial, I should probably say, uh, almost an equation. The only equation to have solutions. So he does uh, factor by grouping. What does he factor out of the second group? Negative one. Negative one. So the factoring on negative one is one of those things that uh, sometimes even when I, I work with students and they're doing it, they're, they're factoring out a negative one, they don't realize they're doing it. Okay, so there is a common factor of negative one. Negative one times g, negative one times three, so you can factor out that negative one. So it does that, that, he even finds the difference of squares is there, g squared minus one is the difference of squares. So what must Quinton do now in order to solve the equation? mean if you found the solutions to an equation? Here's an equation. What does it mean if you find the solutions? What's that? What g equals. So we get done. Do we have that? No. So a lot of students will, will do this as well. Uh, get down to where they factored and it's equal to zero and all the work is right so far. We haven't solved it. We don't know what G is. So how do, what, how do we go about, don't no, just tell me what the solutions are, but how do we go about the last couple steps to find what G is? Okay. Exactly. Set each, each instead of parentheses, let's use a real mathy word. What are each of these things called? They're all factors. And what, why are they called factors? Goes back to the definition of what a factor is. They're all multiplied. They are all multiplied together. When you're multiplying two things together, you call them factors because that's the definition of a factor. You multiply one factor by another factor. Okay. So set each factor equal to zero. G plus one equals zero. G minus one equals zero. G plus three equals zero. G equals negative one, G equals one, G equals negative three. Any of those solutions, any of those values for G will work. You can see it clearly here. If we put negative three here, for instance, negative three plus three is zero. Zero times this will be zero. Okay. And it might surprise you, uh, or it might not if you understand what we're doing here, that if you take negative three, you put it in here. It will make it equal to zero. And we figured out that value of negative three here, here, and here will make it zero by factoring it out, setting each factor equal to zero, and solving for g. It's very clever when you think about it. Other questions? Good. The rest of the homework at all? Yeah. forty-six. factor it as much as you possibly can. This is the number one thing we look for if possible. What's that? What's that? No, Okay, well halfway there I think. Yeah, 
comment that something that all three of these terms have in common, does that exist? Are the facts of the these have in common? C squared? Any uh, new number factors? <coughs> It's probably easiest to look at your, your smallest number, look at its factors, uh, or I guess the number with the least number of the factors, which a lot of times is your smallest one. The 10 only has a few factors, 1, 5, 2, 10, and none of those go into these numbers. So, well, don't go into both of these numbers. So back over to c squared, we get 18 c squared plus uh, 57 c minus 10. What do we have here? What kind of a polynomial is this? It's quadratic. It's a second degree. It's a quadratic. So let me remind you why this quadratic is such a pain to factor, and then remind you how we can make it less of a pain to factor. I'm try and split it up into two factors, two parentheses. And when we multiply them together, we're going to need to get an 18c squared. That's something we need to get. Okay, so how can we get 18c squared? We could do 18c. We could do, in one c, we could do 9c and 2c. We could do 6c and 3c. Okay, which one is it? I don't know. At the same time, we have to get two numbers that multiply to negative 10. Okay, well, well so far we get, we've got 18c squared. So we put an 18 there. C and 18c and a 1c here. And uh, maybe negative 5 and positive 2. Well, that multiplies to negative 10. But then what do you need to get? 57. Can I luck out and, and do it right? Let's see. 2 times 18 is 36. Okay, that's 36c. And negative 5c, that does not add up to 57 like it needs to. Okay. Remember why this is a pain? Do you remember how to make it less painful? The AC method, the big X. Let's get rid of all that. That's what goes up here. A times C. That's uh, 18 times negative 10, negative 180. Here, 57. Okay. It'll take too long to figure out what two numbers, obviously a, a positive and a negative, because if you have multiplied it negative 180, and add 57. So something positive and something negative. Careful, these are not the numbers that go into your parentheses into the factors. It's what I see uh, not by a majority of people, but by a significant number. What these are for is to write 57 as the sum of these two numbers. So we write it as 60c minus 3c. And then what do we do? Factoring strategy we actually have a name for. Mm -hmm. Factor by group, we got four terms. We're going to group them. This first group, second group, including that negative. Don't forget about that. C squared. Well, in this first group, what do these two have in common? <coughs> Six and uh, C, giving us three C plus 10. What do these two have in common? Um, negative one. If there's a negative in front of this first thing, I would like to pull out the negative one so that we get three C plus ten. Because you want these parentheses to be identical, and this is typically a positive number out the front. It's usually how it is. So if that's positive, this number will be positive. So if this number were to be negative, that'd be not what we want. So you like to backdrop that negative. Almost done here. 3c minus 10 is a common factor between 
this term, this term, so factor it out, bc plus 10, and 6c minus 1. This is a degree 1, we can't factor it anymore. Degree 1, we can't factor it anymore. Uh, this is just a c squared. You're not going to factor out c squared unless you want to write c times c. It's kind of uh, unnecessary. So first factor out that common factor. That's important. Then you got a quadratic. It's good to recognize that you have a quadratic and you need to get two parentheses where you have uh, the, same, the same kind of term here, meaning a c. Times C and times D. But then when you notice that there's an 18 out in front, it might be. And, and 18 has lots of factors, and negative 10 has quite a few factors, and to get just the right combination, uh, it might take you a while. So it might be better for you to just go ahead and go to the AC method. Right. Guessing and checking, trial and error, it, it will get you there if you're very methodical and careful. Make sure to keep track of all the things that you tried that didn't work. Okay. Other questions? Okay. So we've got all these different kinds of polynomials. We've got quadratics. Quadratic form, factor um, by grouping. What other ones do we have? Differences in sums. So we have difference of cubes, difference of, and the last one. So we got difference of cubes, difference of squares. I made this list a few times, so maybe it's in your notes. We know it's not a quadratic. How's it not a quadratic? Let's find the quadratic. We just talked about that. Second degree. This is not a second degree. It's third degree, so it could be quadratic. And it's not quadratic form either. Those are, are these two cubes? Can we cube something to get 27 m cubed? What can we go in here? 3? 3m. Plus, well, almost a trick question. 1 cubed is still 1. And if we take a look in the books, yes. we have sum of cubes, difference of cubes. So here's our sum of two cubes. This is a. So a cubed plus b cubed, a cubed plus b cubed factors in this way, a, which is 3m, plus b times a squared. Well, this is a, so if we square 3m, what do we get when we square 3m? What's that? Nine. That's three squared is nine, and m squared is m squared. Okay, next comes minus a times b. Well, this is a times b. What will a times b give us? Three m. Three m times one is three m. Plus b squared. B is one. One squared is one.
Other questions? Difference of cubes, so let's see <coughs> our difference of cubes in the reference. Uh, so this is a difference of cubes. This is something cubed minus something cubed. What would be cubed to get 8x cubed? 2x. What would be cubed to get 27? So if we follow our difference of cubes, we're going to get a, that's 2x, minus b, b is 3. And over here we get a squared, a is 2x, 2x squared is 4x squared, uh, plus a times b, that's going to wind up being 6x. Plus b squared, that's a 9. Can you see what they did wrong? <coughs> Does theirs look different from ours? How so? They got a 2x plus 3, that's 2x minus 3. No common. I'm just there. Well, they're trying to solve the equation. How do they get negative three halves? Once you have a factor, how do you solve this equation? Set each factor equals zero. Two x plus three equals zero. If they solve it, they will get negative three halves. But what you should get. 2x minus 3 equals 0. x equals positive 3 halves. our last one. <coughs> okay, whether or not it works out, we should always check and see what There's two terms and a difference of squares. It says three terms. So
and goes for a sum of cubes, the cubes is two terms as well. Uh, is it factored by grouping? No, uh, that would be four terms. Is it a quadratic? It's a form of a quadratic. It's not a quadratic function, but it's like a quadratic. Okay? This is a lot like to, let's say, x squared, to use a different letter than d, minus 13x minus 45. You factor this in the exact same way you would factor this, only at the end, instead of getting an x and an x, what are you going to get instead of x and x? D, d squared and d squared. Instead of getting x and x, you get d squared and d squared. Did you factor the exact same way? How would you factor this? AC. So negative 90, that's 2 times negative 45. Negative 13. Remember to multiply the negative 90 and add the negative 13. And a positive and a negative. Five. One of them's got to be negative. Yeah, negative five. Negative five. Yeah, eight, ten, no, negative five. Negative eighteen. Negative eighteen, because we want to get a negative thirteen when we add them. Okay, negative eighteen and five. All right, so those replace the negative thirteen x this way, two x squared. Uh, let's say minus eighteen x. It doesn't matter which one we put where. Minus forty-five. We'll factor out a two x x. Same exact process for that one over there in red, only all these x's are not x's, they're d squares. Okay, so we wind up with 2x plus 5 here, we should get 2d squared plus 5 here. And when we get x minus 9, this is d squared minus 9. Rewrite the, the exact same numbers over there using d squares instead of x's and d to the fourth instead of x squares, but it would just be <coughs> exactly the same. Now, are we done? Why not? Get a difference of squares here. d squared minus 9 is d squared minus 3 squared. So 2d squared plus 5 times d plus 3 times d. It's great if you can follow along with me and say, oh, I see, d plus 3, d minus 3. But if it doesn't occur to you that d squared minus 9 is factorable, and that, that immediately you understand it's d plus 3, d minus 3, then you should spend some more time practicing factoring polynomials until it's, oh, difference of squares. Or you're at least going through the checklist in your mind. OK, am I done? Do I have a quadratic I can factor? No, do I have, oh, I got a, I got a sum of cubes here. I had a sum of cubes has resulted from the first stage of factoring, so I should <laughs> try to factor that. So every time you, you do a factorization, you get it all done, it looks nice, look at your factors that you found and ask yourself, is one or more of these still factorable? Uh, OK, 
Okay, that was the last one. So let's pass it in our homework, please. Okay. Um, today is especially, every day is this way, this is especially a day you shouldn't just sit passively and wait for someone else to say or for me to answer my own questions. As you know, I'm very good at waiting and waiting and waiting. Okay? The longer I wait, the longer it takes, and the more cramped we are up against the bells, so you just hurry and get through this. Answer questions, even if you're not sure, even if you feel like you're wrong. If there's any kind of inkling of an answer, get in there and participate in your own education. Okay? So let me set up the scenario. We didn't get to go through this, so uh, we're going to go through it now. So the scenario is, and, and it sounds hokey and made up, and it is very made up and convoluted, but I've taught this many times, and I've confused many students. I didn't confuse them. It's just kind of a confusing thing, long division. Okay. We're going to learn long division, but we're going to learn it this way first, okay, so you can see why we do each part of long division that we do. Okay. Has anybody done long division before? With numbers? No, oh, Raise your hand if you've done long division. Okay. Keep your hand raised if you remember how to do long division. You can do it right now. Maybe half the class and half that is going on. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay. So if you don't remember how to do long division, do not sweat it. We're going to recreate it for polynomials. And if you wanted to like look at numbers, it would be the exact same process. Okay. We break it down into little pieces and uh, take it one little bit at a time. So here's the scenario. You find this piece of paper on the ground. Okay. And it's ripped. It's a ripped piece of paper. It looks like someone did their homework and they had this polynomial and they were supposed to factor it. And you see one of the factors, but not the other one. Okay. Well, if you if you see it or if you don't, this is division. Trying to find another factor is division. Right? If uh, we found some piece of paper and we saw, you know, factor this number, we saw 15, and there was a 3 right there, and a little dot for multiplication, and we were, saying, we were trying to find this other number. We're asking ourselves, 3 times something, something I don't know, is 15. I'm trying to find that thing, right? That's what division is. 3 times 1 is 15. 15 divided by 3 is what you're looking for. This is 3 divided into 15. Divided by 3. Well, by the same token, this is this polynomial divided by x plus 2. 
the way we find it, we're going to find it in a way that I think is, is more straightforward and logical, uh, easier to follow than just doing some long division and trying to remember it and make sense of it. So let's get started. Now, once we find this other factor, this other polynomial, how will we know? What will be the check that tells us we found the right factor? When they multiply together, they get that. Okay? So let's start there. We know that whatever it is, we're going to need to be able to multiply x plus 2 by this thing, distribute x plus 2 into this thing, and get this. Okay? So if that's true, whatever is over here, whatever these terms are, say there's something here, and something here, and something here, I should be able to multiply x by that, and 2 by that, then x by this, and 2 by this, and x by this, and 2 by this last thing, and then it all comes out as this. So let's start with that first thing. Can you make that? You know, I guess it, with some reasoning behind it as to what that first t term probably got to be. Think about what you're going to do when you distribute the x and the 2. Y x squared. Now, if I do x times x squared, does that make 2x to the third? It'll make x to the third. So 2x squared will do 2x to the cubed. 2x to the cubed. 2x to the third. 2x cubed. Okay. Does that make sense? Everybody agree? Anybody have a different theory? Why 2x squared has probably got to be this first term? Why that makes sense? Because when we multiply x into that, it's going to be 2x to the third. Exactly. So the idea is, what do we have to multiply x by to get 2x to the third? 2x squared. Right? And we want to start with the, the biggest power of x. Right? This, is, this is actually 2x to the zero power. Right? So we're going to write it in order of the, the biggest x because uh, then we'll make sure that the only way we can get a 2x cubed is by multiplying x by 2x squared. Okay. And I've been, I've been informed that I explain things too much sometimes, so I feel like that's where I want to go right now, so I'll not do that. I'm just going to say, look at that. Doesn't that work out nicely so far? Okay. x times 2x squared, 2x cubed. Okay, so it's working out. Let's like multiply it together and see how it's going. Okay, x times 2x squared is 2x cubed. It's going pretty well. It's going nicely, right? What's next? What do you have to do next? Multiply the 2. You're going to distribute everything to everything else. So part of the process is going to be 2 times this 4x squared, right? So how's it working so far? Hardly good, because we got 2x cubed, but also <coughs> it's not quite working out, right? Because how is this uh, wrong? We just need x squared, not 4x squared. Yeah, we need x squared. We got 4x squared. We got too much. How much too much do we have? That's We got 3 too much, right? We got 3 too much. Okay. Now, here I'm just going to put this idea in there that maybe we can fix it like this. Since we have 3 too much, maybe if we could subtract 3 of those. You see how we want x squared. This is what we're talking about. We want x squared, but using 2x squared here gives us 4x squared. We only want x squared. So if we subtract 3x squared from 4x squared, what do we get? x squared. Now that's great. That, that would be a dream come true if we can make it work. Can we make it work? Can we somehow get a minus 3x squared by maybe moving to the next term. Could we make it so that as we continue along this distribution process, the next thing we get is we get a 3x squared. How? Minus 3x. So this is what I wanted to get, but it's just an idea, and it turns out we can do it. So let's go through and see how it's going here. 
x times 2x squared is 2x cubed. Agreed? Okay. But then x times 2x squared is 4x squared. But we didn't want 4x squared, right? We wanted what? x squared. We want x squared. So we put this negative 3x because then we're going to distribute the x and the 2 again to the second term. x times negative 3x gives us negative 3x squared. So now what did we do? How did, what did we fix? The x squared term. We got 4x squared minus 3x squared gives us x squared, just like we wanted. Okay. So this is great. First term is right, 2x cubed. Right? There's not any way that we're going to get another 2x cubed, or another x cubed term, and a like term with x cubed. So that's good. Um, now we have x cubed, or sorry, x squared, just like we want there. Okay. Uh, but then we can't have quite finished yet. What, is, what do we also need to do right now? Two times that, and that gives us negative six x. Is that right? What is it supposed to be? Negative five x. Okay. So, what could we put here that would take this from negative six x to five? Negative five x. Add one x. One x. Okay. So, can we get that? Can we get a one x? The next thing we're going to do is distribute the x and the 2 again. Okay. So we're going to just distribute the x2 so that we get plus x. Plus x? Just a 1, so that x times the 1 gives us x. So x times 1 gives us x. That's great. So we got 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x squared, which is x squared. Minus, three, minus 6x plus x, which is minus 5x. It's almost perfect. Okay. So now, at this point, we're just hoping that that 1 also works for the last term to come out, right? Because if it doesn't, we don't really have a way of fixing that. Okay. So let's see if it works out. 2 is the last thing we get distributed. It's distributed, so 1 is 2. And that is, it happens to be the thing that we did want to get when we multiply these two things together worked out. So that's, first of all, are there any questions? Does that make sense? Kira? Questions? What's that? Is there an easier way? I guess it depends on who you are. But to understand the long division, yeah, the long division is a set of steps that we could follow every time. And in some ways, people find that to be easier. But when I teach that first, it's very like, what, is, what are we doing? What does that mean? Okay. So I explain it this way first, and then we'll go to the long division, and we'll see how it's the same thing. So we're doing the exact same problem here, but in long division form. Uh, that's not what we want to divide it to. Times 2x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 2. Now the exact same thing is about to happen, only it's a little more algorithmic, which means step by step by step. So this was algorithmic, it was just a little more, we're, trying to, we're playing on our intuition here. And here there's just a set of steps that you follow. But what we're gonna wind up with is something up here, this thing up here, we should be able to take it, multiply it by x plus two, and get that. It's the same thing as three divided into 15. You get five, why? Because five times three is 15. So whatever is up here, this times this equals this. Division is that's what division finds. Can everybody see this color? Okay. So the first thing that we ask is the same thing as the first thing we asked over here, right? What would that first thing have to be so that when we multiply it by x, we get two x cubed? So we don't worry about the two right now. We just worry about the x, and then we'll we'll bring the two in a second. But whatever this is, it has to multiply by x to get two x cubed. And 
whatever that is, it may it just may not work out with the two, and then we're gonna have to fix it like we did here by like minus three x squared, for instance. Okay, so what does that thing have to be so that this times x gives you two x cubed? Two x squared. Two x squared. Okay. So now here comes the check and see how we're doing part. 2x squared times x is 2x cubed. That's great. If we didn't get 2x cubed, right under the 2x cubed, we did something wrong, because that's what we were trying to get. Then 2x squared times 2 is 2 is 4, sorry, 4 x squared. Okay. The reason long addition is set up this way is to see how are we doing. Did we get what we wanted? No, we didn't get what we wanted. We wanted an x squared. We got 4x squared. We're off. Yeah, we're off so far. So then that's why, if you remember from your long division of numbers, that's why there's a subtraction here. We look at how far off we are. What's the difference between what we want to get and what we have actually gotten so far? So x squared minus 4x squared is negative 3x squared. So what are we saying? We're saying if we took the 4x squared that 2x squared times 2 gives us and subtract 3x squared from it, 4x squared minus 3x squared will give us the x squared. Okay, so we're just finding out what is it that we want to add to this. We're going to add a negative 3x squared to get back to the x squared that we were shooting for. That's our target, and we're off by negative 3x squared. Okay? So that's the next thing we go to. What do we put here so that this times x will give us that negative 3x squared? What do we put right there? We want a minus, minus 3x. Negative 3x times x gives us negative 3x squared. That's great, because now we, when we distribute, we get a negative 3x squared that'll add to the 4x squared to give us the x squared that we were shooting for. But also, negative 3x needs to be multiplied by 2. That gives us negative 6x. Okay, that's where the bringing down comes from. And we compare. We compare. Uh, I did not write that right. That's a minus by that's what we wanted to get. This is what negative three x times two actually gives us. Okay, so we're off again. So we subtract to find the difference between those two things. Negative three x squared minus negative three x squared is zero. Negative five x minus negative six x is x. Negative five x plus six x is x. So if we can add an x to the negative six x that we currently have, we're going to get a negative 5x. So how are we going to get an x? What are we going to put here so that we get x? Plus a 1. 1 times x gives us x. 1 times 2 gives us 2. That's exactly what we wanted to get. Right? So if we did that subtraction part, um, I guess, yeah, we should bring that down. Uh, 1 times x gives us x. 1 times 2 gives us 2. If we did that subtraction, we find x minus x is 0. 2 minus 2 is also 0. Could have started with this, but anytime I've ever tried to do that, I tried it two or three years in a row. Been very confused and, and trying it this way first helps people understand what's going on. Why are we trying to this times this is this? Well, because whatever that factor is, we're going to need to be able to multiply them together and get that original. Okay. Why are we doing subtraction? Well, because when we put each term piece by piece in here, we figure out. We're not getting quite what we want. We're not getting x squared. We're getting 4x squared. Okay? So we subtract to find out what the difference between what we want and what we have is. What we want is x squared. What we have is 4x squared. The difference is negative 3x squared. Um, so I'm going to give you one that works out nicely like this, meaning there's a zero remainder. Um, I just want you to I'll put it on the same screen here so that you can follow this example.
can't read that, let me know. But uh, just practice yourself. Okay, so whatever, whatever progress you've made is good. And if you're not moving along, it's probably because you're getting a little hung up. So let's do this again together and uh, avoid that, those hang-ups. Okay, first let's review what we're looking for. Someone tell me, like, once we're all done and we found the answer, what is that thing? What are we looking for? Chapter 3. Yeah, well, yeah, the other factor of this. Right. Now, what's the test to show that we found it? We multiply this by that. Okay, just that fact alone is why we do long division the way that we do it. Because right? we're constantly asking the question, what would that thing have to be so that when I multiply it by this, I get this? Okay. Make sense? So what does that thing have to be so that when I multiply it by that, I get this? So x Squared, why x squared? How do you know that x squared is the first part of this other factor? Because x squared times x is x to the third. third. We're trying to get every piece of it just one at a time. We can guarantee that we can we can put a term here that will give us x cubed. Right? X squared times x is x cubed. Yeah, Abby? Why don't you multiply it by all of the like x minus eight? You do. But you can't really ask the question like, you can't um, get the perfect thing. Let me, let me stop and go back and rephrase that. You know that whatever you put here is going to have to get multiplied by x. Mm -hmm. And you know that you do need to get an x cubed. There's only one thing that you can multiply x by to get x cubed. There's no, there's no other options. x squared is it, right? So don't really worry about the, the negative 8 part until the next step. Our, our, our decisions are very limited. We, can, we have to get x cubed. There's only one way to multiply x by something to get x cubed, and that's to multiply by x squared. So now we see, okay, that part's definitely for sure got to be. It's got to be x squared because we have to get x cubed when we multiply. But now what happens when we multiply it through by x and negative 8? x squared times x is x cubed x squared times negative 8 is negative 8x squared. So that is not what we want, right? What do we want? Negative 2x squared? Negative 2x squared, we've got negative 8x squared. Okay, so we want negative 2x squared, so we're off. We're off by quite a bit. We're off by, well, to figure out how much we're off by, we subtract this from that. Uh, x cubed minus x cubed is 0. Negative 2x squared minus negative 8x squared is 6x squared. We just found out that what we're getting is negative, x, negative 8x squared. If we add 6x squared to that, we can get back up to the negative 2x squared that we want to get when we multiply these two together. So that's where this comes in. Next, we're going to figure out what are we going to multiply x by to get that 6x squared? 6x. 6x times x gives us 6x squared. 6x times x gives us 6x squared. We just pause for you to multiply by negative eight, if you're wondering that. But just for a second, let me let me write down over here what we're finding. Okay. First, we find x squared because x times x is x to the third, and x squared times negative eight now is negative eight x uh, squared. Then we put a six x in there in that other factor. <coughs> Because 6x times x is going to give us 6x squared, and those are going to add together to give us the negative 2x squared that we want to get at the, at the end. So that's why we
we put that plus 6x there to get the plus 6x squared so that these two, these like terms, will add together to <coughs> negative 2x squared. We also, again, like I said, have to multiply 6x by negative 8, because when we multiply these two together, this has to get distributed to x and the negative 8. 6x times negative 8 is negative 48x. Is that what we wanted to get? No. No, we wanted to get negative 40x. Okay, so we're off by 8x. Negative 40x plus, right, minus a negative. 48x and 8x. Careful about those minus negatives. Right, so 6x times negative 8 gives us negative 48x. That's not what we want. What we just found is that if we were to add 8x, that would get us back to negative 40x, like we want. That's what we want to get. We get 8x. So what are we going to put here so that we multiply it by x? We get 8x. 8. Plus 8. 8 times x is 8x, perfect. 8 times negative 8 is negative 64, and that's great because we wanted to get a negative 64. 8x minus 8x is 0, negative 64 minus negative 64, negative 64 plus 64 is 0. So plus 8 is that last piece. 8 times x is 8x, 8 times negative 8 is negative 64. These combine to make negative 40x. And we got minus 64. This thing is so annoying. Yeah. Gotta back up. You have to back up all the time? <laughs> Driving backwards. <laughs> okay. Backing out of things. Right, I'm gonna put one more to you. It's a new <coughs> challenge. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna really kind of sort of You have to rewrite it as long division. We don't have to do anything, right? What do you mean? Like we just have to write it. No, you have to do the division. No. Like, <laughs> oh, you don't have to change the way it looks? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're just putting it where it needs to go. Uh, I would say. The second number? Four. Yeah. Okay. Right. You don't not so change any of those numbers. You don't have to do anything before you put it in the long division. No. Other than if you are missing a like missing the x squared. Yeah. Might be a good idea to put a zero placeholder there. What? Okay. Okay. But we're not missing it. That's just in general some problem. It's like the synthetic substitution. Remember how we would have zero placeholders? Yeah. Same idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But only, only for the, this is called the uh, dividend, the thing that you're dividing. Now the thing you're dividing by, that's the divisor. So for the dividend, you need zero placeholders. That might be the only possible change you would make. But otherwise, just write it out and get started. Let's work together and uh, make some sense of this remainder thing. All right? What's going to be our first term that we're going to Three X. 3x. Why 3x? And I like to put the x's right up above each other. Why 3x? How come we write 3x? Oh, because 3x times x squared is 3x cubed. Hey, we're up here. Sorry. 3x times x squared is 3x cubed, exactly like we need it to be. 3x times x is 3x squared. Okay, but we wanted 11x squared. So we subtract, and we find out that what we need to add to 3x is, or, we need to add to 8 squared. And then you bring down that 4? Bring down that 4x, because you're also going to want to get 4x when you, well, whenever you figure out what this is. Then you have to put the 8 up there? Where? After the 3x at the very top? Yeah, plus 8. 
Yeah, yeah that's what we're looking for. Why is it plus eight? Negative. 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 They're trying to get eight x with eight x squared by multiplying whatever this is. So eight times x squared is eight x squared. Eight times x, eight x. And we subtract, or we subtract. Eight x squared minus eight x squared is zero. Four x minus eight x, negative four x. Bring down the one. Now what's the problem? I don't know. Multiply something to get four x by x squared. Yeah, you, you want to put something here and multiply by x squared to get an x to the first power? Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, Katie had a really cool idea. What about if you put minus 4x to the negative 1? Whoa. Katie. <laughs> Katie's thinking. She's, she's just thinking. Right? She's not saying, what do I do? She's saying, what can I try? Right? She tries it. And it's a really great idea because, because negative 4 x to the negative 1 times x squared. Well, we multiply an x squared times an x to the negative 1. What do we do with the exponents? And 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's pretty cool because it gives us a negative 4 x to the 1. Okay, but negative 4 x to the negative 1 is going to give us a negative 4. Does it right? add zeros to the rest of your life? Huh? This is where you just add zeros at the top until. <laughs> this is kind of yeah. This is kind of like the <laughs> until forever. It's kind of like the decimal part, right? Of yeah. when you do long division by with numbers. Okay, but we're not going to do that. That's a really cool idea, <laughs> but it's still problematic. And like Katie's so, or mine? Huh? Whose idea is problematic? Well, it's a neat observation, and Katie's idea was a cool idea. Okay. We both suck. Probably <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> both cool. <laughs> okay, so let's back it up. Because if that did work and give us a positive one, that might be worth looking into. But it didn't work out, so let's just go back. This negative 4x plus 1, we're having trouble multiplying by something to get it. Okay, so this is what we just call a remainder. Okay. Okay, the remainder means something, though. Let's visit a, a number <coughs> example. 27 divided by 5. Okay. So this one's going to have a remainder. Yeah. And it's going to help us see what we're going to do over here. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, I'm going to ask this question that I don't really like, but the answer we want 5 goes into 27 how many times? 5. 5. Okay. And 5 times 5 gives us 25. And when we subtract, we get 2. Okay. Well, we can say remainder two. What's the actual number that we get? Let's let's see. We've divided twenty-five by five. That's sum of twenty-seven. That's a little. That's most of twenty-seven. Uh, divided twenty-five by five. But now we have this two that we also need to divide by five. Right? So we wind up with five and two divided by five, two fifths, or point four. That's that two there still needs to get divided by five. Right? We divided the 25 into five pieces, that's five in each. That two also needs to get divided by five. That's that's one way to explain why you get that two fifths left over. There's still a two that needs to be divided by five. Okay. So over here, well we did this divided by x squared plus x and we got three x plus eight. And then we have a remainder of negative four x plus one that still needs to be divided by x squared plus x, and that's how we write the <coughs> last little bit. Okay. We write it like that because that's the only way that x squared plus x times this will equal the original thing, will equal 3x cubed plus blah, 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 blah. Your answer when you do the divisions is this. This is the result. This is the quotient of dividing, well, doing that division. That's the result. That's how we write it, not remainder. Right. Oh, boy. Okay, so we've done some long division. Lots of long division.
in this scenario, what's, which of these things is the divisor? Divisor. Divisor. divisor not the divisor. Second one. What's that? Second. What's the second? The second, second one here or second one here? X squared plus X. X squared plus X. X squared plus X is the divisor. Okay. So for certain kinds of divisors, we can use an easier form of division. Let me show you first what kind of divide, what a divisor needs to look like. For a divisor that looks like this, 1 times x to the first minus whatever. It doesn't matter. Let's say a p. Let me give you some examples. x minus 1, x minus 5, x plus 3. Isn't that x minus negative 3? x plus 3. x plus 7, x minus 108. Okay. All of these are like that. Okay. Ones that are not like that are 2x plus 1. That doesn't work. 3x minus 5. That's no good. x squared plus 1. That won't work. It's got an x squared instead of an x to the first. Okay. So strictly 1 times x to the first power and then plus or minus some number. So if your device looks like that, you can use the type um, what's the divisor for? The thing you divide by. Oh, so okay. yes, outside okay. the bracket. Okay. So, <coughs> so for that kind of divisor, you can can use synthetic division. Good news is you already know how to do synthetic division because it's exactly the same algorithm as synthetic substitution. That should strike you as pretty interesting. If synthetic substitution is one is an easier way to plug in a number for x. Synthetic division, which is the exact same set of steps, is a way to divide one polynomial by another. division and now we'll do it since it, it does have a divisor that it fits the mold that we just talked about we can use synthetic division okay negative one negative two negative 40 negative 64. just the making sure that we have all the powers third second first and then a constant okay and here's the thing So if you notice in the long division, when we have just a 1x here, maybe you noticed it, maybe you didn't, it doesn't matter a whole lot, but because there's a 1x, when we ask the question, what do we multiply this x by to get whatever we're looking for, it just winds up being whatever number is in front of the next term, whatever term you're trying to get. So really all the difference is made by whatever this number is. So you put the opposite of whatever you see there, minus 8, put a positive 8, and then it's the same steps as synthetic division, or synthetic substitution. 8 times 1 is 8, add them together, 6, 8 times 6, uh, 48, uh, minus 40 is 8, and 8 is 64, and you get 0. 0 remainder, 8 constant. Work from right to left. People want to work from left to right all the time. Work from right to left. Remainder, constant, x, x squared. x squared plus 6x plus 8 with zero remainder. If you wind up with a remainder, that's your remainder. You took that and you put that over the original divisor. There you have it. Wow. <laughs> Right. What's your little rule about positive 
whatever this is. <laughs> yeah. The opposite. The opposite. So if it's a positive number, it's a negative. Yeah.